and come back to the second part of the, the lecture. And so let's go to the next slide. Yeah, uh, we have we have stopped in the geometry subsection. So in this in this lecture, I will I will show the the last example using the the start summary and. And then we will talk about the coordinates, teams, and quick plot. And to finalize this lecture, uh, we go through the annotation and the plot composition. Another useful and no less important function to, of ggplot is the stat summary. This function has a huge flexibility in the specification of summary statistics, and it can it can operate in a data frame or a vector. Um, in this in this plot, I'm showing the expected phenotype mean by year, with with addition uh, of a ribbon that represents uh, a range, uh, that represents a range where we we expect approximately 96 percent of observation that falling, as we can see in this plot. Uh, in this case, the mean is zero, and then if you add two standard devia if you subtract two standard deviation, add two, two standard deviation here, you end up with nine, more or less ninety six percent of the data that falls in that region. If this follows a normal distribution, clearly, as as we have few number uh, of observation, probably we do not have an represent a, a representation sample. Uh, of the target population, which leads to a biased estimate for both mean and variance. Uh, however, this strategy is important here be, as a way to show that both mean and variances uh, are increasing over time. Uh, to make this plot, to, to make this plot, we we use the the three stat summary function I'm showing in this uh, in this part here. With the first one. Uh, we compute the, the ribbon. We used alpha equal 0 0.3 that, that reduced the transparency of the ribbon. And the function is in, in red uh, to compute the, the minimum and the maximum range of the ribbon. Uh, the second and the third, uh, the second stat summary was used to compute the mean and, and the plot. It, it, and, and plot it as uh, and plot it as a line, while the third one uh, was used to compute the mean again, but now plotting it as a as a dot. Generally, uh, when generally people uh, confound the differences between uh, scales and coordinates. Variables are, are first, this is because variables are first passed to aesthetics and then uh, have, have been scaled and passed to geometries. And after that, the, this data is passed to coordinate system. What this means? This means that in the end, the position values are interpreted uh, and already scaled in the interpreted by the coordinate system. For example, in a Cartesian Cartesian coordinate system, we have the, the vertical uh, y-axis and a horizontal uh, x-axis, while in polar coordinate system, each point is, the, is in, in the plane, uh, is determined by a distance from a reference point and an angle from the reference direction. Uh, the polar coordinates is fundamental when we want to create like pie charts. Uh, the cart th this is really interesting because what I'm plotting here, uh, the first plot that shows the proportion against X, um, this is the, the proportion of storms. Um, the Cartesian version, the, the, this is the, the how I can explain this is the the Cartesian Carte, Cartesian version of the pie chart uh, is the is this uh, bar bar uh, chart. What this means? This means that if we create this bar chart with the proportion and the stack 
like stacking the, the information per cate category. And we want to create a pie chart. And then we have just to transform the, the coordinates from Cartesian to polar. So this does to, to, to turn this bar chart into a pie chart, we just need to change the coordinate and adding this, uh, this line here. Doing that, we end up with the plot in the right side. Uh, the least, the, the least in, but important thing when building uh, a plot is about how it looks like, right? And this is where teams can go inside. The thing representing the, the virtual look of a plot, and it does not really flow from the, the data itself. It is an independent component of a layer grammar. This controls the grid lines, titles, colors of lines, color of background, legend position, legend layout, size, and so on. Uh, team and ggplot has been implemented in a hierarchical uh, way, as I'm showing the figure uh, in green, this one. Uh, for example, if you want to modify the size of a text in both axes, we can use the axis title because both uh, axis title X and axis title uh, Y uh, inherit the information from axis title. Uh, on the other hand, if if you only need to apply modification one of those axes, you have to go direct to that axis. Uh, we have some standard themes, as everything in Digiplot we have standards, and I'm showing here four different, uh, sorry, six different standards. Uh, my favorite, my favorite one is the BW and the Classic. Uh, so the standard teams is really straightforward uh, to use, as I'm showing here, just get your plot plus the team that suits you and go ahead. We can also do everything we want in ggplot representation using teams, but we have to do some work on that. Here I'm showing uh, how to modify text elements on to make a non-standard team. Firstly, I am removing both minor and major grid by adding an element blank in the panel grid. But let, let you think a bit about, here's a, I, I will leave a question to you. Um, is there a better way using less code uh, to apply an element blank in both major and minor? I will leave the answer to you, and, but keep in mind that the answer is intuitive. Uh, so afterwards, I create a panel border with dashed line. And to cover the dashed line in the Y and X axis, I added the new layer using the uh, using this uh, X, X line solid, solid dark blue line uh, with higher size than, than I with higher size than the dashed line. And in this way, I increased the size of the phone, of the, 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 that line to cover the dashed. Uh, then I increased it to the size of ticks and adding a black color. I also changed the panel background from gray to white. And it finally, I changed the font family and face and size and color of titles and axes, uh, axes and y values using this axis title and x test. Uh, this is a bit more complex, but if you know the, the idea behind the functionality of these elements, you will see that it's not too, too hard. Uh, the reason to understand team is to make your plot easy to read and likable when doing a presentation or publishing a report. Uh, there is another another interesting way to do G, to to make a plot, and this is they call quick plot in ggplot as an alternative 
shortcut for uh, the ggplot1. Generally, we use less code to build a standard plot with Q qplot. Uh, it's a, clearly, it's a great, uh, it's a great uh, uh, function and allow, allow you to produce plots quickly. But make, keep in mind that for more complex graphics, I, I really recommend you to avoid the qplot and go directly to ggplot. Let me start now the annotation section. Um, with, with, basically, with, with annotation, you can add new layers to the, to the plot, to the ggplot. Um, for, for annotation, we, we don't use the, the data frame, but we, we use instead a vector of elements that is passed to the geometry. And the annotation allows us to, to add this text or even data vectors, uh, in, data in vectors format. To, to your plot. Uh, for example, most plots will not benefit from adding text every, every, for every single observation, and this probably will create a massive plot. Uh, however, uh, labeling outliers and other important uh, points in the, in the, in the, in the plot uh, will be very useful, right? Uh, here we, here I am, I am showing the, the annotate function with its arguments. And for each annotation layer, we must declare the type of geometry. And you can see, you can see here the, 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 all the arguments we have in the annotate function. Um, the geometry will be the name of geom used for annotation. For text, it will be geom text. Texty. If you want to draw a rectangle, it will be geom rect, rect, and we we can we can uh, give information about position. Which position we will plot the text, like giving the x minimum, maximum, or y minimum, maximum, just x and y. Um, but we will we will we have I, I have some examples to show you here um, in the next slides. Uh, in this plot, I'm using two different types of geometry. Uh, in the first annotate, I am drawing, uh, in this annotate, I am drawing a, a rectangle. And in the, yeah, I'm drawing a rectangle in the plot to, to emphasize uh, the Yuhikan event. Uh, in the second, you, as you can see here, this is the rectangle. And this emphasizes just the Yuhikan event. In the in the second and third um, annotations, I am including um, the name of the the two Yuhikan with highest uh, with highest wind and lowest pressure. And Adam does in the text we are informing the year of the event and the name of the most powerful Yuhikans. In this case, um, is Vilma in 2005 and Gilbert in 1988. Uh, there's another detail here. As you can see, I'm adding these two arrows. Uh, if, if I include the text too close to the point, for example, here, um, the, the plot will not look great because the, te the text may mask other points. Uh, to solve it, we can just put uh, the text a bit far from that point and then add it uh, these segments, these geon segments, one for each text. Um, for these segments, I'm including the information of, of X, Y, uh, where the segment will, will end, and the, the type of uh, segment I want. In this case, I want an arrow type. This is, this is a, uh, uh, I think this looks much better than just include the text close to the point. This is um, one approach that you can use. Here is another example, but now using the function statpoly ek from the package ggp misc. Uh, this package works with any polynomial function, as as you can see. Let me pick this. Yeah, as you can see here, I, here where is, is where I am including the uh, the polynomial uh, function is the is a formula that we have the the responsive variable as a function of a poly. And this poly 
is order one, but you can include the order two, three, and so on. Uh, this actually has a, I mean, a issue. I can say a issue because you have to rename the variables uh, to be y and x as I, uh, sorry, y and x uh, as I can I can as I did here. You know, I get the call names of orange, and that the y is circumference and x is age, and I rename it by x and y. And then this spec works perfectly. And let me show the output. Uh, so this is the output. In the left side, we, we are including a re the regression equation and coefficient of determination, the R square, as a text in the final plot. Uh, however, if we want to split the data by three and include a specific regression line for each panel, uh, we only need to include the face to wrap function as we discussed before for ggplot. And with this part, we have then uh, a specific uh, equation for each subset related to the tree. Okay, this is for the tree one, two, three, four, and five. And if we, in addition, if we want to label each plot using uppercase letters, we can use the function tag face from package egg. And this is really useful because when we are doing a report or writing a manuscript, sometimes we need to label each of those plots and the egg gives us this as a gift. Um, another way to, to annotate information in the plot can be through the geom text and geom label. Here I am building a data frame with uh, y values from one to three and three different font families, the Sam, Serifi, and Roboto. Thus, I, I call the ggplot function include the data as global information for next layers. Um, first, firstly, I am plotting a text with geom, uh, ge uh, geom text. And um, let me, yeah, to mapping, mapping the x equal to a vector of ones. Uh, y equal to the y in the data frame and the label color and font family uh, representing the, the the column family in the data. Um, this will give me a, col a specific color for Sam, Serif and Roboto, uh, a specific font family for each of representing if of these uh, families and the label also for, for each one. And to, to, to see the difference between gene text and gene label, I'm adding another layer here, but now using gene label. Um, for the gene label, I modified X to be zero because we, we don't want to overlap uh, the text. And I, I, I added the font, font, the font face element um, that I will show in the next, in the next uh, is like how this font, font face works. Here we can clearly see the difference between uh, gene label and gene text. And gene label draws a, a, a rectangle behind the text and it's represented, as you can see here, is representing the left side of the plot. Um, the, the effect of the font face to the, to the geon label can be seen as if you, if the number is one, they will, they will plot the plain text. If the number is two, will be the bold text. If the number is three, will be the italic test text. And if the number is four, they will plot the bold and italic text. Uh, this is everything I have in terms of annotation. It's simple and you, you should explore because this, this, uh, this part of ggplot has uh, a lot of more information, a lot of more functions to work with. And now we will go to the plot composition side. Uh, now let me, let me change the, the, the subject because uh, plot composition we are now working with the path work. And this package, this package was created to combine ggplot's output into the same, in the same graphic. 
there are other packages such as the greedy extra and cowplot that can be used to combine ggplots uh, too. But the logic behind Pathwork is far more intuitive and technically uh, more elaborated than other packages. Uh, let, let we assume for now three ggplots output that I'm calling here as p1, p2, and p3. And based on those plots, we will show how we can do different combinations from simple to complex using mathematical operators for combining them. Uh, the vertical bar that represents P1, P2, and P3 can be seen as a, a way to, 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 to place yeah, this vertical bar, a way to place uh, plots beside each other, while the, the slash, uh, the slash uh, can be used to, to, stack, the, to stack them. Uh, before before show the, the results, let me read what I'm doing in, in both situations. So in this in this side, uh, on the left side, I am adding uh, the plot P1 on the left, and beside it, on the right side, I'm adding the plot P3 stacked above plot P2. In the left side, in this uh, in this uh, code. Uh, I am only adding the plot P1 and P2 side by side and including an annotation. The result is this. Uh, the main message here is that you can create any combination with you want to do. Uh, you can see the plot composition as a matrix with uh, rows and columns. Um, for example, in this plot on the left, uh, we have we have here, we are using the, the first column. You can see that as a first column and the two rows to draw this uh, plot one. Uh, while in the column two, I'm using the first row to draw this plot and the second row to draw this pie chart. Uh, the plot anno the annotation in this, um, this part uh, it's a, another useful function because again, you can tag your plot with letters or numbers. In this case, I'm using letters A and B. So sometimes we, we need to, to do a, a composition with uh, graphs and tables together. And the function grid, the function table grab from the package grid extra, I think is one of the best one to make, uh, to make a table as a plot. And then we can use it to, to combine using the path work. Like here, we have the plot P1. Uh, and beside this plot, I'm plotting a table. And another useful function is the text grab from the package ggpub uh, r. And that is, is, uh, can be used to add some text as a plot. And I will show the result. Uh, on the left side, I'm showing the orange data where I'm including the blue points to summarize the marginal mean with a line here too. And the table, uh, I'm using the, the, the table grab to add this table together with the plot. And this table shows uh, the mean, median, and, and standard deviation over the age of the tree. On the left side, uh, I am trying, I, I, am, I wanted to, to add some text in this first plot. And then I'm using this, uh, I, I wrote this text here and I've stored this in a, a, as a, a character. And then I'm, I'm using the wrap elements to create a new plot with the, that text using the text, text, text to grab it from gg uh, pub r. And then I'm using the path work to, to plot both together uh, p4 uh, above the, the p1. Uh, plot and then we end up with this plot here. I hope so you you enjoyed that that idea and work uh, more to get um, Different results that I'm showing here. This is everything I have uh, For today and so here I have some references uh, I used to build this presentation and I also include some link useful links and I really really recommend you to go to this uh, 
um, the R graph gallery because they have a lot of different examples and use it for examples as a start point to, to build a plot. You don't need to start from zero. Thank you so much.